welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Go ahead and pray. Someone is crying. Let God arise over my life. Let God arise over my case. Let God arise over my children. Let God arise over my job. Let God arise over my health. It's a believer crying unto God. Let God arise over my destiny. It's a call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Take a minute and cry. Declare your expectation. Shaparato sabrande beleke parakusia de balando sebresiata. Grabadila kapo shabreke marusa diakata. Father, tonight the name of this conference will speak in my life, speak over my destiny. In Jesus name we pray I feel scared to give you one prayer point before you sit I'd like you to pray and say everything that is long overdue that should have gotten to my destiny but by some demonic manipulation has been delayed that tonight in the name of Jesus it must be released open your mouth and pray I someone is praying is someone praying Jesus name we pray shout a loud amen in Jesus name we pray now let me encourage you to be sensitive within the minutes that we have do not make the mistake of Jacob Jacob woke up from a dream and said the Lord was in this place not another place this place he saw angels ascending and descending that means they were going somewhere but he was not part of those they were coming to he saw them but did not partake of what they were carrying how do you see angels ascending and descending and they pass you and go some other place proximity to their presence did not guarantee a delivery of anything you must be expectant are we together now father we pray that you breathe upon us tonight let your word come with power in jesus name please be seated very quickly i'm going to speak and then we'll pray together I'm teaching you in line with your team on the topic provoking divine intervention provoking divine intervention provoking divine intervention provoking divine intervention God is a God of intervention the Bible is full of instances where God stepped in over the affairs of men and he rewrote stories changed situations like it's happening to someone already that god is going to do same for you tonight in jesus name 
now i wrote here that it is the desire of all men it is every man's desire especially for believers in christ to experience growth progress and advancement in life and destiny let me start from there that everyone born of a woman desires whether they believe it or not whether they admit it or not it is in the destiny of everyone a, an intrinsic desire for growth an intrinsic desire for advancement and progress am i right on that every time you celebrate can i step up here sir when you celebrate birthdays when you celebrate anniversaries it's not just the counting of days you are making special days special because they mean to you that you are making progress am i right on that so if you celebrate an anniversary when you celebrate say your birthday you are rejoicing because it is giving you a sense of progress psychologists agree that one of the indices responsible for happiness is progress or a sense of it that means the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress that is the degree to which you are happy did you know that most depression is caused by an awareness that the individual is not making progress so when you find people depressed it is because they have concluded jesus asked the man in john chapter 5 he says do you desire to be healed the man did not answer the question he said i have no man that was not the question the question is can i attend to your situation he said don't waste my time i am used to being in this position for a long time are we together so it is everybody's desire parents want their children to make progress students in school that's why they celebrate passing exams they celebrate promotion those who are sick in the hospital we usually carry a little card and we say get well soon not get well later you don't meet anybody in the hospital and pray for the person and say lord i'm praying that this person remains here for five years no get well soon because growth advancement and progress is in an inherent desire in everyone let me prophesy to someone whatever has held your legs held your hand and tied your destiny to one position i stand upon this grace in the name of jesus if you have the faith to believe let me speak to you go forward go forward who am i speaking to go forward in ministry go forward give us exodus chapter 14 please exodus chapter 14 and verse 14 moses is standing before god because of this this situation that he found himself in the nation of israel they were rejoicing i hope you know that they had been in captivity for 430 years they didn't know what progress looked like they didn't know what advancement looked like are we together i'm teaching on divine intervention and my first point is that it is inherent in every man regardless tribe regardless age regardless gender everyone desires to go forward to make progress and to advance that's why you dedicate houses that's why you rejoice over a new car that's why you rejoice at the arrival of your child that's why you rejoice at the graduation of your child moses exodus 14 14. the nation of israel is standing the red sea before them the egyptians coming behind behind them and here's what he told them the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace he encouraged them but go to verse 15. verse 15. moses himself was afraid what he did in verse 14 was leadership not courage he comforted them first then he now ran to God and said, what do I do? We are stuck. And the Lord said, wherefore criest thou unto me, Moses? You are not just a leader, you are a prophet. He says, speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Can I speak to someone here? I don't know what has tied your destiny down. If you believe this declaration, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. Go forward in spite of the red sea go forward i speak to a believing sister go forward a believing businessman go forward go forward say after me myself 
go forward. Prophesy, say myself, go forward. One more time, myself, go forward. In ministry, go forward. In business, go forward. By this declaration, I cause the spirit of stagnation. Hallelujah. Look at me. How do you know you are stagnated? You are stagnated when the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing in your life is your age, no progress. The only thing that is growing is your age. It is God's desire that every one of us make progress. You are a man of God here, you must challenge yourself. Make progress. Progress in the spirit. Progress in ministry. Progress in destiny. Are we together? I do not know anyone who rejoices over stagnation. You can rejoice in the midst of stagnation. You can rejoice in the midst of pain. You can rejoice in the midst of setbacks. But you cannot rejoice because of setbacks. No. You don't rejoice because of stagnation. You can rejoice in the midst. Is someone learning already? Now the truth that we have to admit tonight and this is my second point. So point number one that God desires and that it is consistent, is inherent in everyone to desire growth, advancement and progress. You have that clear? The second point that I want to bring tonight very quickly is that in truth, there is nobody here who has all their needs, their needs met and their goals achieved yet in experience. Now by faith we have it. But everyone here is still trusting God for something. Do I agree? Do you agree with me? Everyone. If you are not trusting God for something in the area of your health, maybe your marriage, maybe your children, everyone here still has an expectation. If I ask you to submit a prayer request now, I doubt that there will be any honest person who will not write something even if not for yourself maybe for someone connected to you i hope you know that someone else's trouble can affect you yes sir you can be all free and fine lot was okay but his house was not okay are we together now there are times you can be fine as an individual but your house may not be fine and it will eventually get to you everyone has desires in fact yes how the bible puts it in philippians 4 and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything it says by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request he knows you have request let your request he was speaking to everybody let your request let your desire be made known unto god god knows that we have desires in matthew chapter 7 and verse 7 he says ask and you shall receive ask because you have desires are we learning now mark chapter 11 and verse 24 he said what thing soever ye desire no matter how complete you think you are you just be alive for a while you will find out that there are issues in your life that may not yet be sorted now in as much as all things are yours provided you are human there will always be an area you are trusting god for are we together so the first thing i've told you is that we all desire growth advancement and progress number two that in addition to that everyone including you and i that there is an area or two or more than that where we are trusting god to step in for us now listen very carefully let me list for you a few issues that represent the desires of people the desire to be healed from sickness and disease the desire to end stagnation lack and poverty the desire to end shame and disappointment the desire to end unexplainable demonic occurrences that plague individuals that plague families listen you must know the name of what you want changed 
are we together whilst i'm speaking release your faith you cannot say oh god bless me oh god help me it is wonderful but it is fake you need to define what you want as want uh, as an expectation what should god change what should god transform what should god deliver you from are we together because we all have desires we all have needs and sometimes it looks like those needs become difficult to manifest this is what necessitates the subject of divine intervention everybody shout divine intervention what is divine intervention exodus chapter 3 please from verse 7 to 9 my god someone's life is about to change exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 to 9 Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Exodus chapter 3 please from verse 7. And the Lord said. I have surely seen the affliction of who? Talk to me. The affliction of who? My people. So God's people can be afflicted. Not the affliction of the hidden. The affliction of my people. They are my people. But for whatever reason, they have found themselves in a position where they've been afflicted. I have seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Next verse. And I am come down. Hallelujah. I am come down. I am come down. This looks like a prophecy for someone. God is coming down tonight. That those who have said, Where is your God? There is a scripture to answer them tonight. God can come down and deliver men from shame. God can come down and deliver men from tears it says you have turned my morning to dancing you have turned my sorrow to joy you believe that shout amen three times and i am come down to deliver them out of the land of the egyptians and not just to leave them there but to bring them up into a land and even a good land when God delivers men he takes you out of into there are those who have the power to take you out of but they cannot bring you into the God that we serve when he intervenes he does not take you out of yesterday and leaves you there we used to sing a song back then that God did not bring us out this far to take us back again you still remember that song that he brought us out to take us into the promised land when God takes men out he does not leave them on the way he takes men into I'm sure everyone here has received a lift maybe at one point from someone so you, they enter a car maybe to give you a lift the goal is not to take you to your house necessarily the goal is to shorten your distance they will keep you somewhere and sometimes where they keep you it becomes worse off because there's no car to help you continue God is not like that he does not give you a lift when he takes you from a place Egypt he insists that you enter the place of prophecy who am I speaking to tonight the God that is taking you out tonight is not going to leave you halfway in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated what is divine intervention very quickly divine intervention is an act of deliverance from negative conditions and circumstances divine intervention is an act of deliverance from negative conditions and negative circumstances it occurs when God steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives divine intervention is an act of deliverance from negative occurrences and circumstances it occurs when God steps in 
over the affairs and the issues of our lives influencing those circumstances to turn out for good to turn out for good what makes it divine intervention is what we see at the end if there is no good at the end it was not divine intervention the end point of divine intervention is glory testimonies is someone learning now it occurs when God steps in over the affairs of a man let me tell you believers hear me it is true that God can step in over the affairs of a man it is true I don't know about your God but my God oh God can step in by himself the Bible says and at midnight Paul and Silas is that still in your Bible that they prayed they sang and the Egyptians I mean the the, the jailers heard them then my Bible says suddenly there was a sound this time it was not the sound in Acts chapter 1 or Acts chapter 2. There was a sound and when God came in, he rattled the foundation of the prison. The Bible says, and all doors open. How many doors? Immediately it says, all doors, financial doors open, health doors, all doors open. Let me speak to someone in the name that is above all names. By reason of God's intervention in your life, may all doors open ah dear believers here yeah, may all doors open in the name of Jesus please be seated God can step in over the affairs of a man's life he can intervene miraculously and turn things around and give you a testimony and can I tell you something sometimes it happens so fast it looks like a dream the Bible says when the Lord turn again turn again I like the way the Bible puts it that he did it yesterday does not mean he cannot do it again if there is need for it he will do it again when the Lord turn again someone say again Lord I know you came in for me in 2014 but I need you again turn again 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 your power is still the same There are idols that cannot do anything about your situation. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's so little. Let every other name fade away. Please be seated. Turn again our captivity. So divine intervention occurs when God steps in over the affairs and the issues of our lives, influencing those circumstances and situations to turn out for our good. It's called divine intervention. Are we learning so far? Now, why do we need divine intervention? If you're writing, please write this down. Why do we need divine intervention? In as much as we are Christians, in as much as we are believers having the life of God why do we need divine intervention I will tell you why there are certain situations and circumstances we find ourselves in for whatever reason there may be a variety of reasons carelessness ignorance demonic attacks causes beyond our ability we find ourselves in situations and circumstances in life and destiny that are beyond our ability as humans to solve correct or influence this is why we need divine intervention I give you an instance so a woman gets pregnant happily she's done her own part but if the child comes out at seven months it was not her making are we together now that baby is battling between life and death at that point no matter what she knows about delivery she has exhausted herself i'm speaking humanly at that point there is a need for divine intervention when you build a house and for a climatic reason that is beyond your control rain comes to wash everything overnight washing the hundreds of millions that you've invested or sunk in how about god forbid but things like robbery 
that you are you you are sincerely laboring and another person out of carelessness comes to want to punish your destiny someone said divine intervention let me tell you there are times in life i remember the story of a man in the bible called mephi Boshet. who has read about that that this was a young man i hope you know he was not born crippled i used to think he was born crippled he was born like any other person but one time a midwife was trying to help him escape i'm not sure she was a wicked woman but for whatever reason she left him down and his legs became crippled for the rest of his life there are circumstances that sometimes from a human standpoint may be beyond your control divine intervention there are people who it is not they are making that they were born from very poor families when you are born you find yourself wherever you find yourself and, and make do with whatever you find there until the day you grow enough to reprogram your own results did you hear what i said there are people who were born as the children of idol worshippers they didn't have a choice from birth they were made to drink things incisions on their bodies there was a man in the bible called jabez the bible says from birth the mother placed a name that became a curse upon his life it was not his making he was not given a chance to decide his lot as a baby she bore him in sorrow and called him jabez but a day came jabez said oh that thou wouldest bless me the story starts with the end he says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren but it was not always so that would be someone's story ah that would be someone's story that would be a believer's story in the name of jesus that when god is done with what he's doing in your life your ministry your children people will look at you and say ah, is Saul also one of them and you will tell them the God of divine intervention I believe in divine intervention there are situations and circumstances we find ourselves in for various reasons that are beyond our ability as humans to influence or change like I said, it can be caused by a variety of factors. Sometimes your carelessness can end you in trouble. Sometimes ignorance. Sometimes the mistakes of others around you. Are we together? Now let me tell you the truth. There are things men can do. There are things Satan can do. But there are things only God can do. Don't assume you heard what I said. Just listen. Let your spirit be open. There are things men can do. They don't have to be born again. There are things men can do. It's within the power of men. God gave that ability to all men. There are things when you see, you know that this is human. There are things when you see, you know this is Satan. John 10.10. 10. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There is a way you hear someone's story. You don't have to be a pastor. You know Satan has passed through this life. He leaves his signature. Are we together now? there are families here when we look at you there are destinies when we look at you satan has stamped his signature delayed defeat death patterns of death every year patterns of failure every year bad luck from pillar to post your loved ones go abroad and return back like criminals there are things when you see you will know satan is the one behind this but there are other things when you see you will know that this one oh this one let me show you what god can do daniel chapter 3 and verse 30 it was nebuchadnezzar himself who gave his testimony daddy about what god is able to do give us verse 29 please daniel 3 therefore watch what god can do i make a decree that every people nation language 
which speak anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut in pieces and their homes be made a dunghill. Read the last sentence if you can see it. One to go. Because there There's is no, no other, other God, God that, that can, can deliver. deliver after this sort. There is a way God moves that no other God can mimic. You're not a man, oh. You're not a man. You're the God who opens doors. You're not a man, oh. Someone say, Father, in my life, do what only you can do. Uh, someone should shout it again. Say, Father, in my life, my destiny, the life of my children, do what only you can do. Turn it into prayer for one minute. What only you can do. What only you can do. Sapa la cote se le creca de belegata. Sapra te le caparentos coto pregate belegata. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. John chapter 3. One of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, he came to Jesus in the night. And he said, Rabbi, verse 1, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. He says, for no man, no man can do these miracles which thou doest. But if a man should do it, it is because God is with him. There are things men cannot do. Coming from a family of witchcraft, and then being a deliverer tomorrow men cannot do that it is only god that can do that in the life of a man did you hear what i said that a woman who may have been barren for 10 years and then jehovah decides to step in and gives her triplets in nine months that one oh i can tell you is beyond the scope of medical science that there are people here the stamp upon your head is ichabod People look at you and say you were once blessed. You, you used to help people. But as it is now, we are not even sure if you are still a child of God again. But God is able to restore. I'm telling you this so that you don't confuse the hand of God with the hand of man. Don't give the glory that should be due God to a man. So you don't mistake it that it was your director that promoted you. There are things only God can do. Paul can plant. Daddy, Paul, Apollos can water. But increase. Nobody has the power to bring increase. There are things only God can do. When you see God lift ordinary men. I'm saying this because there are things God will do in your life. There are things God will do in your ministry. That anybody who has been asking where is your God, beginning from this week, is your testimony that will answer them. That my God is alive. My God is alive. He is still a lifter. My God is alive. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. My God is alive. He can still turn my mourning to dancing, my sorrow to joy. He said, Job, do you still hold on to your integrity? And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. There are things only God can do. Please sit down. Please sit down. In my life, I have seen things in my life that I know it was men that did it. I've seen things in my life that I know it was Satan that did it. But I've seen things in my life. I've seen liftings in my life. I've seen help. Help. 
I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. He said, from whence cometh not our help, my help. I don't know where you got your own from. Because some trust in horses and chariots. That is an alternative. But as for me, my help. Ah, someone who is about to rise, say my help. Someone who is about to be the envy of many, say my help. Come from the Lord. So when they see your results and they are shocked, tell them it is because it is beyond the realm of man. How were you promoted twice in one year? Men don't do that one. It is God. How did the triplets come? God. <laughs> ah! Listen, when a man helps you, he will have to wait until the water is dead. Then he will push you. But when God comes, he does not wait for any season. He is the season himself. Listen. I will continue, but I feel it strong in my heart to speak to a man of God here. Don't be discouraged. God helps men. Oh. God helps men. Carry this message back home. Don't just be excited and say amen for nothing. God helps men. There are lives when you see, you will know that this is Ebenezer. God has become a stone of help. God can help men in ministry. God can help men in business. Are you listening now? Let me speak to a young man here. It looks like you are a graduate and you are just floating around with your certificate. Listen, have this at the back of your mind that by strength shall no man prevail. God is the helper of man. A man can wake up in the morning and sleep late in the night, your Bible says, and he only eats a bread of sorrow. But if a man achieves so much as to sleep well in the night, I tell you it is God that gave that man that sleep. Who is God speaking to tonight? Because many of us have been asking, God, can you make a way for me in the wilderness? The Bible says in Psalm 78 and verse 41, they limited God in the wilderness. They limited God. I have seen what God can do in my life. Hmm. God can help men. Settle it once and for all. You are a businessman. Keep your business principles and use them. But at the back of your equation, make sure you leave space for god because there is an equation in a man's destiny that only the size of god there is an equation if your destiny is only one plus one you are in trouble it must be one plus one plus a mysterious space that only the size of god can occupy so when you talk about the life of the great they will tell you i planted there is a place for that i watered there is a place for that but this space you see, I don't even know. Just like you do not know the way of the wind how, or how bones are formed in the womb of her who is with child. There are certain aspects of the equation of success and glory that only God can be the explanation. So I'm speaking to someone already. You've done everything in the strength of the flesh. You've tried to do ministry sincerely even with integrity you've tried to do business you've tried to get a job i'm reminding you right now that in all you're doing if you forget about god or you carry him as a necessary luggage you have signed in for a life of defeat you are ebenezer you are ebenezer Speaking to a graduate looking for a job, you are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got